I've got a new bag pattern to share with you today. This one is called the kit bag and it's perfect for a night away or to use as like your gym bag. I'm probably going to use it as my swimming bag. I've wanted to make this shape bag for a while because I just love the sort of vintage look to it. The classic sort of rounded duffel bag style. It's obviously got round ends and one end I've put a pocket with gathering details. You could put a pocket on both ends if you want to or not have a pocket at all at the ends if you don't like the gathered pocket. And then there's a front pocket on the front of the bag, some handheld straps and a long shoulder strap which can be adjusted to suit your carrying needs. <laughs> Here's what it looks like just chucked over the shoulder. This is on one of the shortest shoulder settings but you can loosen it and wear it crossbody like so which is nice and easy and good if it's got a lot of stuff in it because it spreads the weight a bit more. To get into the bag it's just one long zip and there is one pocket inside it's a very handy little front pocket here, you can just chuck your phone in when you're walking around uh, instead of having to go into your bag and open everything up. This was my first final prototype of the bag and I added some of this crisscross lace-up elasticated detailing. There are instructions on how to add this part in the instruction booklet if you're interested, um, but I don't show how to do it in this video. But it's a very easy little added extra. I do love it in the white polka dot. This fabric I found on Etsy and then the other fabric that I'd made it in, that was from a quilting shop. So I think if you're interested in this fabric, that's what the selvage says. People always ask me where to find good pretty floral fabrics and I would always recommend going to a quilting fabric shop because they often have really pretty prints there. Um, or Merchant and Mills do some great block prints and the Cloth House in London and then obviously you've got Liberty Fabrics so it depends how much you want to spend on your project. I'm going to stop rambling now and get on and show you how to make the quilted kit bag. So as always we're starting off by arranging the pattern pieces. You can have the pattern sent off to be printed on a large scale. I just like to print them out at home you can print it on an A4 or US letter size printer. And I just stick the pages all together using the registration marks to match them up and then tape them all together and then cut them out. A list of everything you need is included in the instruction booklet. I found most of this hardware from Etsy, um, but a few bits were found at a local fabric shop. So let's get started on the first step. So to start with, we're going to quilt our fabric. So we're going to need two pieces of pattern piece A and one piece of pattern piece B. And I'm going to quilt it just as one big rectangle. And you'll also need two pieces of pattern piece C. I then lay that outer piece onto the wadding and cut around it. I use a fusible wadding, which I would highly recommend because it just makes your life so much easier. So I just give my fabric a good iron and then I iron it to the sticky side of the wadding. I then take that all over to the sewing machine and start quilting. For this one I've just done vertical lines with a two centimeter gap. That's all the quilting done so now we're going to lay the pattern pieces back on top, trace around them and cut them out. I find it's a little easier just to trace them rather than pin the round ones because I can get a bit more of an accurate cut. Make sure to take note of the notches, especially on the circular pieces because they'll be very handy for lining up the pieces when it comes to the end step. And there we go, those are the quilted pieces we need for the bag. Then you can go ahead and cut out the other pieces that don't need quilting but are in your outer fabric. I do find it easier cutting the strap using a rotary cutter. I'll put the measurements on the strap pattern pieces if you want to do the same. Then cut out your lining pieces. I also like to trace my lining just because it's easy to draw onto this calico. And then one piece of your lining is cut on the bias, so again I like to cut that using a rotary cutter. 
If you're using a reasonably lightweight fabric like I am, I'm just using a quilter's cotton, then you will want to interface your strap. So go ahead and cut out some fusible interfacing. Let's work on the round side pocket. This is an optional pocket. You don't have to add this. I just think it looks really fun and it's quite a useful pocket. So we're gonna fold the top down by one centimeter and press it and then fold by another one centimeter and press that. Then edge stitch all the way along the bottom of that fold and you now have a channel seam that we can thread some elastic through. So grab your elastic and we're gonna measure it along the top where it says pocket placement and make sure you're not pulling it tight. You just wanna measure it while it's flat and then thread that elastic through the channel seam using a safety pin. You then want to secure the elastic with a few back tack stitches at each end and just make sure it's not stretching when you put it back on the pattern piece between those notches. We then need to add some gathering stitches along the bottom so there's some notches where they start and end. So at one end you want to back stitch and then at the other leave it open and just do a parallel row of stitching and then take the top two threads and start to gather them up. We're then gonna find the notches again on one of the quilted side panels. Start by pinning the top of the pocket and then work your way around. Manipulate the gathers at the bottom so that it fits nicely. It should look a little something like this. And then we're gonna go and stitch that into place with a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance. For the other outer pocket, we're gonna fold it down by one centimeter and then by two centimeters. Again, I'm using that piece of card just to get a nice crisp line. And then you just want to edge stitch that fold down before you find one of the pattern piece A quilted pieces. And we're gonna find the center notch and match that notch to the pocket notch. I like to make sure the top of the pocket is sitting really nice and flat. So I will measure down from the top on each side to check it's even because you don't want a wonky pocket on the front of your bag. So once I know that's in the right place, I just pin it and then stitch down the edges. Now it's time to make the straps and the little zip tabs. They all follow exactly the same method of construction. You just fold them in half and then fold the outer into the middle and then all over in half again. This is definitely the best method I found for making even looking straps. Once they've been ironed, you can just take them over to the sewing machine and edge stitch them closed. Make sure to give them a good press after you've stitched them so that they sit nice and flat. We're now going to attach the shorter straps onto the front and back of the bag. So the placement is marked on the pattern piece and you have the notches at the bottom that you can match up. So I like to start by pinning the bottom of the strap and then taking my ruler and I like to measure in from the edge so that it's straight all the way up. You then need to take note of where you need to stop sewing and stitch across the top. Again, it's noted on the paper pattern, um, but I like to measure down from the top. I think it's about 8.5 centimeters down. And then I make a little mark, or you can add a pin and stitch across that line. So to attach that strap, we're gonna edge stitch up and then stitch along when you hit that point that we've marked and stitch back down. To add some strength, we're going to stitch some boxed crosses. So I like to just mark these out with pencil because then you get a really nice, accurate stitch line to follow. So that's the first strap stitched on and then go ahead and stitch the other one on to the back piece. We don't want the straps getting caught in the zip when we sew that, so you just want to pin them out of the way. We're going to put together the long shoulder strap and the zip tabs. This is where we're going to start attaching the hardware. So with the long strap, we're going to thread one end through your swivel hook and bring it back about an inch to an inch and a half back. And we're going to stitch that down. Be very generous with the stitches you add here. We're going to add quite a few stitches to hold it into place. Then on the other end, just add your slider and slide it up until about the middle of the strap. Then taking that same end, we're going to add the other swivel hook. And then we need to bring that end up and into the slider so it's easier if you move some of that top strap up then you can easily thread the bottom of that strap into the middle of the slider and then you just want to fold it back on itself and stitch that closed again add quite a few rows of stitches there and that is what the back should be looking like and you should be able to slide your slider up and down the strap finish the zip tabs we're going to thread them through the d-rings and just attach them 
together at the other end. Just add some holding stitches for now because they'll be added to the bag when we add the zip. Now we need to make sure the lining is all ready, so I'm going to make the pocket that goes inside the lining. It's exactly the same method as the front pocket, but this time we're going to also be folding the sides and bottom in. So go ahead and fold the top down by one centimetre and then by another two centimetres. I then went and edge stitched that along the edge of the fold and then I pressed one centimetre in on the sides and the bottom. Placement for the lining pocket is shown on the paper pattern piece and you can just find that placement, pin it into place and then we're going to stitch down the side, along the bottom and up at the top. I'd then like to add a parallel line of stitching 0.5 centimetres away from that just to add a bit of strength and make it look nice and neat. Time to add the zip, we want to make sure the good side of the zip is facing the good side of the front and then that the good side of the lining is facing on top of that as well. Then just pin those all together all the way along the top and stitch across it with a 0.5 centimetre seam allowance. To do this you'll need to change to a zip foot and part of the way down you'll need to open the zip and close it again and then carry on stitching. So there we go, that's one half of the bag done and now we're going to add the other half, attach that to the top of the zip, flip it over and sandwich the lining on top of that making sure good sides are still facing and again stitch across with 0.5 centimetres seam allowance. So there we go, that's the zip attached. We're now going to go and press the front and the back before top stitching close to the edge of the zip. Find your zip tabs that we made earlier and we're going to add those to the ends of the zip. So just roughly stitch those into place and then we can add the bottom panel of the bag. So you just want to make sure good sides are facing, pin it into place and stitch along. To reduce the bulk and make it easier to sew the sides on, we're going to trim the seam allowance just of that one piece that we've attached of the bottom panel. Just trim it down by 0.5 centimetres and it will just reduce the amount of bulk sitting on that seam. Then fold the other end of that bottom panel over to meet the other side and we're going to pin that and stitch it across. And again trim down the seam allowance but just on that bottom panel. Pin and stitch the lining together at the bottom with the good sides facing. And then go and give those seams a good press. Try and make the quilted seams all face to the bottom of the bag, but then the lining can be opened up like this. Turn the bag through and make sure the lining is sitting nicely inside the bag. And we're gonna stitch this lining and quilted outer together. Find your two round quilted sides and we're going to add the lining pieces on top of them. Pin them together and then just stitch them so that they're sitting together. At this step it's a good point to take note of the notches again on the round sides. And then you're going to want to make sure you open the zip before turning the bag inside out. And now we're going to start matching the round circle side to the main body of the bag. This bit requires patience, so I like to just match the top and the bottom. You can match the sides, notches, but I actually find it easier just matching the top and the bottom and then manipulating it from there. So once I've pinned it into place, I like to set a really long stitch on my machine and just do a rough stitch around and then check that it's sitting in the right place. Once I know it's sitting in the right place I then go back in with a short stitch length and stitch the proper one centimeter seam allowance. Then just go ahead and attach the other side. Now we need to cover those raw edges so find the bias trim that we cut earlier in your lining fabric and we're going to press it into the middle and then press the edges to meet the middle. So it should look something like this. You then want to open up all the folds and fold one end in and we're going to place that on the edge of the seam allowance and we're going to stitch it all the way around as close to the stitch line as you can but don't go past the stitch line. Then when you reach the other end overlap it by a few centimetres and then just trim off any excess. Then that fold we ironed in earlier should naturally want to fold over the seam allowance. So just fold it over 
and this bit is very satisfying. <laughs> so just fold and pin all the way around that seam and then we're going to stitch on that fold. Now we've just got to turn the bag inside out, push out all of the edges really well, maybe give it a little press if you want to, check for any loose threads that you need to cut off, then you can add the long strap to your zip tabs and you are finished. The kit bag is a very satisfying make. I've made three of them now and I can definitely see myself making some more for Christmas presents. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much to anyone who's purchased a pattern from me really means so much and I love seeing all of your creations when you share them on Instagram. Do let me know which pattern you think I should create next and I will see you all in my next video.